Hey, welcome back. We've been talking through how to deal with electric field problems in physics and AP physics classes, and I want to continue with that and show you how to do a tougher problem where you need to find where a point in space is, we'll call it point P, where the electric field is zero. And there are two charges nearby, so effectively the electric field from this charge cancels out the electric field from this charge, and we don't know exactly where that point is. So that's what we're attempting to do today. I'm not going to read the problem at you, but here's the setup. It's also written over here in a diagram format. And I want to start with this equation over here, because this, I think, is the most useful way of thinking about what an electric field is. It's an area in space where if something has a charge, it will experience an electric force. And if that charged object, we'll call Q naught, that's like our small, usually positive test charge, but it could be, in this case, it could be negative as well. You would just have to reverse the direction of the electric field. In any case, that's our definition of what we mean by an electric field. It's also a vector, something to keep in mind. Well, we know something about this electric force. We've talked about it in the past, that's Coulomb's law. And in fact, this is Coulomb's law right here. Now, these subscripts are just labels that are here to suit our needs. We can actually change them around as we see fit. And we're going to do that here. And so what if we change them around? Because we have a Q0 over here. Instead of calling this Q1, Q2, and Q0, three different variables, let's simplify that and call it Q0 and Q1 for our two variables. We can sub that in upstairs in the numerator. You can see that the Q0 up above and the Q0 down below are going to be canceled and you're going to be left with this equation right here. And this is the equation that we're going to be using. So this is the second equation that we have for the electric field. That's the electric field that is created by a charge of significant value near a point in space like there's an electric field from this charge right here and it has an impact at this point in space. In fact, it's going to be towards this object because we assume a small positive test charge for the direction of the electric field. So this electric field is going to be heading down. Now there's an electric field on this point P from this charge up here as well. And so we can run this equation twice and do some algebraic tricks. And I do really want to show you some pitfalls to avoid. So I'm going to do that in a slightly different format coming up. All right, so let's go ahead and think about how to reason through this. I've already said conceptually that the two electric fields are going to be equal and opposite to each other. We know that because the net electric field is zero. You could actually prove that if you wanted to. You could say the sum of the electric fields is equal to zero, and you could also say the sum of the electric fields is equal to the electric field on the point from one plus the electric field on the point from two where in this case you're going to make this a negative value because now we're talking about directionality. You set these two things equal to each other, you would say this is a true statement here, and therefore you could say that this is a true statement. So we already knew that conceptually, but if you wanted to prove it mathematically, that's how you do that. All right, now let's say we're going to take that equation. We're going to take EP1 is equal to EP2. We already know this circled equation in red over here is going to be our guide for this. You could say, well, Kc, Q1 over R. And let's think about what R is. This is the distance in between the initial position. We could call this R1 over here, its initial position, and the point. And so you could say that is going to be R1 minus P squared. And then we can say, well, Kc times Q2. Now we need to reverse the order. If you think about it, P is here, we need to find this distance right here. So that would be P minus what we'll call R2, P minus a negative four effectively, and that's gonna be squared. All right, so we've got this equation set up. We can immediately cancel out KC and we can cross multiply. So let's go ahead and do that. And so we've got our equation cross multiplied. Now, I do wanna point out two different variations, two different problems you can avoid, and one you can avoid that immediately. Notice that on both cases, Q1 and Q2 are both negative. You may or may not remember that. If that's the case, we can multiply both sides by negative one and make both Q1 and Q2 positive. That will help us with the next step. So we could just say, this is a way that I'm gonna suggest we could do this to avoid a future square root problem. Another way of solving for this is to do a trick that I'll show you in a little while. Now, first of all, what we do want to do is avoid the complexity, added complexity we're going to have if we start distributing these values in here. This is squared. 
And so what we want to do is actually take the square root of both sides. And let me show you what I'm talking about here. All right, so if we take the square root of both sides, what we're left with is this. We're left with the square root of Q1, and that's fine, times RP minus R2. And there's no squared function now because the square root of a squared function, they cancel each other out. And then we have square root of Q times R1 minus P. All right, now we're getting somewhere, so we can continue with this. I'm going to go ahead and call, instead of RP, I'm going to call this P so we can be consistent with our nomenclature here. So let's continue with that. I'll move this up. And one simplification we can do here, we can say this is P minus R2, is I can start to put the square root of Q1 and Q2 together. And I don't normally do this. I don't normally solve, but there are enough variables here and some complex knowns that if we just got rid of some of this stuff, it would actually make our life easier. So normally I don't plug in numbers before the ends, but here I'm suggesting it's probably a good idea to do so. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All right, and immediately you might notice the problem. So the problem that I said we could do earlier, where I said you can multiply both sides by negative one to avoid this issue. If we get here, you may not know how to solve this issue algebraically, but I'm gonna point out another path to solving this. So you could say, we don't wanna have the negative sign underneath the square root symbol. So what we can do is actually combine this though. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If we do that, the negative signs go away and we can reduce this to being just this. All right, and now we've gotten this far, so let's go ahead and continue with this. Let's get P's on the left side and R's on the other side. First though, we need to distribute this. And now we're ready to plug in our values for R1 and R2. And now it's just some simple algebra to go ahead and put together. So that's how you go about in solving for this point in space where the electric field is zero as a result of two charges impacting that point in space. So hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments down below, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.